Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you tarot and witchcraft is what I do. For those of you guys returning, my lovelies, welcome back. Here we are, as I promised that I would be doing a video for you guys for this major life-changing transition that we're going to be experiencing, which is the Pluto transit. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. Everyone's been speaking about it. Uh, it is a uh, major, as you guys know, um, Pluto is one of the planets that is very slow in moving. It takes about 20 years uh, to move from one sign to another. Um, so we're going to be talking about that here. Why is it important? Well, in astrology, there are always transits that are happening, but some are more life changing than others. Um, though my channel is not primarily a channel where we do astrology, um, most of it has to do with the teachings of the esoteric as well as uh, tarot readings or learning how to read the tarot. But there are, like I said, major transitions that happen that um, is very important to know. Why? Because we are experiencing life and these major transitions are transitions that are very transformative and those are the ones that I primarily focus um, on my channel as well as the end of a year uh, going into January um, we focus more on the astrological aspect of the predictions that are going to be unfolding for the previous year I mean for the following year so, but like I said, we have major momentum here. So this is uh, worthy to speak about. Why? Because you want to use these energies as best as you can to the best of your benefit. And it'll make sense. Um, these momentum, um, massive transits that happen um, usually have a, a theme right in our lives and it is very important to know about them why because you want to use those energies you want to make the best of it you want to also prepare um because it's not always nice it's not always rosy right so pluto the lord of death rebirth regeneration power wealth lord of the underworld is going into aquarius from this month, beginning this month, March 23rd, 2023, to June of this year. And from June, it's going to move back into Aquarius. Sorry, back into Capricorn. Um, and Pluto always does this whenever it transits or whenever it goes into a different sign, it will tiptoe. And then go back uh, when we are experiencing um, the retrograde. Um, because it's a very slow planet, like I said, in the beginning stages, it tiptoes into the sign that it's going into. Then it will retrograde back into the previous sign that it was in. Uh, so as you guys can see here, we've had Pluto in Capricorn for 20 years, right? And it is finally moving out of Capricorn and it will be going into Aquarius. So like I said, from March 23rd to June of this year, it will remain there. And after June, it will retrograde back into Capricorn and stay there and then 2024 it will be stationing in Aquarius to finally stay there for the next coming 20 years why is it so important like I said previously it has been in the sign of Capricorn it's been there for a very long time the last time Pluto entered Aquarius um, was back in 1778 
which is around the time uh, of the founding of the United States. This is a life transforming transit, not just for us in our lives or our everyday life, but collectively. Aquarius is the sign of people, of society, of invention, organization, science. Pluto, the planet of wealth and power, there's definitely a paradigm shift that is extremely prominent in this process. And going into Aquarius, Aquarius is we the people. The societal structure going through and been under a lot of rules because Saturn was in Aquarius the past few years. And this planet of Saturn rules, the planet of rules and restrictions. Um, you guys seen the theme that was experienced, right? Which was the pandemic, the lockdowns. Um, we've been seeing a very high censorship of the internet, on social media, uh, Instagram, YouTube, what you could say, what you can't say, um, a back and forth type of energy regarding that because Saturn is structure. So Saturn has left Aquarius and it has gone into the sign of Pisces, as we all know, the major transit that just that we just experienced that a couple of weeks ago. Um, so this is important, you guys, because like I said, you know, Saturn is also a slow moving planet and it is a very it's a scary, you know, MO <laughs> um, as as uh, Pluto is. Pluto is the sign of power. It is the sign of money. Yes. But it is also this, you know, the sign of death and transformation. And we, you know, this major transit that we're going to experience with Pluto. Um, like I said, Pluto is going to be tiptoeing early degrees of Aquarius which will remain there from March to June, to June 11th. And we're going to get a little taste of what is to come. So when Pluto enters Aquarius in March the 23rd, we're going to see from March all the way to June, the theme that is going to be surrounding this transit in your chart, meaning in your life. You will see it. You will start to experience where you're being challenged, where you're needing to let go, where it's becoming a bit more chaotic because Pluto is not a planet of, you know, Saturn. Think of it as it's a, you know, a lot of people see it as a scary planet, but it's uh, nurturing in the aspect that uh, whatever theme you're working on, it's progressive. Pluto goes into the sign and you, it immediately creates the impact. Um, so like I said, you're going to be seeing that theme come up. Um, and again, you know, then it'll go back into Capricorn, but finally in 2024, it will station back in Aquarius and not leave until 2044. And that's because it is a very slow moving planet. Like I said, it takes 244 years to go around the sun or the zodiac signs. Um, Pluto was in the sign of Capricorn since 2008. Uh, what we saw, you know, on Wall Street Prime scandal, we saw corruption being exposed uh, with those in power. Pluto can expose what's hidden. Uh, keeping in mind that Pluto and Capricorn can also trigger plagues uh, when we encounter Saturn as part of, you know, around the time of the Black Plague, the rat infestation, um, and also the thing that we call coronavirus, right, uh, that we just experienced. Um, so Saturn in Aquarius is... Uh, Aquarius based on the people. So it is the people getting their power back. 
It can also mean revelations in science. So they are definitely the structure of finances and banks that are definitely going to take a major shift. We're already seeing this, uh, which is still in the energy, um, the, the energy of Saturn uh, that was in Capricorn. Um, but now it's Pluto going into Aquarius. Remember for the people, um, some financial collapses will happen. Um, but also Pluto and Aquarius may also speak about contact or awareness of other worlds, uh, which is a funny thing because that's something that's already happening. Uh, we've already been seeing it all over the world. Um, and also something to point out, I will go as far as making this uh, prediction because Saturn just went into Pisces. Um, and now with this Pluto transit going into Aquarius, um, those that have been in power, uh, when Pluto goes into Aquarius, the paradigm is also going to shift for the people. So we're already seeing that this is something we've been experiencing, I want to say the past year and a half, where people are standing up for what they believe in. Uh, they are marching. They are, you know, it's been something that's been ongoing. And, you know, Saturn was government, its officials, uh, et cetera. But now with Pluto going into Aquarius, keeping in mind that Aquarius is a representation of the collective. So the people in power is not the collective, right? It is, in essence, the minority. Um, so what they do or what they have been doing has not been to the betterment of humanity or the betterment of, you know, the collective. So there is a major change that's going to be erupting, so to speak, with Pluto going in there, uh, Pluto going into Aquarius, um, you know, this is government officials, this is famous people, this is influencers, et cetera, um, are not going to have or hold such power because Aquarius energy, like I said, is collective. Sometimes Pluto in Aquarius can also represent the people overthrowing or dominating over the control that they've been under. So like I said, we're already seeing that. Um, so it's a moment to really reflect on everything we've been seeing, what the news has been reporting or what they haven't been recording. We'll get deeper into that. Um, but Pluto is definitely transformative and, uh, whatever is, you know, being hidden or whatever, you know, is just being sneaky, et cetera, or people taking, uh, abusing control, um, Saturn brings it, you know, it brings it up to the surface. It's like, you're going to be held accountable, but it's the processing. It's the, the, uh, integration of the steps to need to take forward in order for it to finally come right. Cause Saturn is the karma planet. But if you think about it, a lot of people have this thing going on, or they say, you know, sometimes karma takes too long. Because Saturn is, like I said, a, sign, a planet that takes a while uh, before it actually takes care of business, before it actually faces people with their karma. So because we are just about to like, you know, Pluto is just ready. It's been, you know, trying to transit out of Capricorn and it's going into Aquarius. So you're already seeing um, a lot of these issues, you know, in the collective start to come up things that were in the process of, or maybe taking a little bit longer, but you knew about it. An example that what comes to mind would be like the Trump thing, right? It's something that everyone's been talking about forever, but it just seems like it just hasn't moved forward. Well, you hear now that, oh, you know, they indicted him, et cetera. Um, yeah, because Pluto's getting ready to go into Aquarius, like I said. So it sometimes it it becomes so, you know, 
you you clearly see these themes start to come up. Um, and like I said, you know, the control that they've been under, meaning society, um, that's what sometimes leads to the overthrowing. Um, so, you know, what's happening right now with the banks and the big corporations taking losses, like I explained with the Trump thing, it's a perfect example of what was um of what was uh Pluto and Capricorn doing um it's bringing to surface the double dealings and lawful things um I know it's been a long process as we are getting ready for Pluto to go into Aquarius but the collective of humanity um you know a lot of these themes are going to be coming into into awareness and unto your awareness um even things that the news doesn't want to report um as an example you know something that most of you guys would know is like an example with you know with that of trump which comes to mind it's easier because everyone knows about it or the kardashians um having this big ass scandal about money laundering uh, that the media is trying so hard not to talk about right but it is in connection with what was going on with britney spears and the con conservative ship um believe it or not, it's connected. Um, and it's been under uh, this connection, uh, the money laundering, the church that Kris Jenner created for tax purposes, et cetera. Um, that's been threatened to the house market that's, you know, we're currently going through that is, like I said, threatened to take a major hit which is why you had multi-billion dollar companies buying in masses houses to outbid normal people uh to continue inflating the housing market which what which is why it skyrocketed to be honest um but now with the economy that's being threatened uh they're taking losses and all of this is like i said pluto and aquarius energy even though it hasn't gone in there it's we're already seeing that we're already sensing and feeling that and as for the people, for the higher good of the collective and through the scary things may come or scary things may come that in the long run will help humanity. We're going to be seeing massive challenging energy of those that have created, like I said, censorship within social media and the Internet. Um, we're already seeing this with the government trying to ban TikTok, as an example, under the disguise that it is for our safety. And when in reality, it's because the U.S. is not making the millions and millions that TikTok is making. Um, so basically what they want is either you they want to buy it or ban it, basically, um, because Instagram and Facebook has been competing with them and they just have blown them out the water. Um so you think, how does this affect me, right? Um, because TikTok uh, is connecting humanity, you know, economics, people from different places, uh, different countries, we all can sympathize and experience in real time what's happening collectively, right? Something happens as an example um, in Texas or something happens in Hawaii or something happens in you know, China or something happens in um, Syria, whatever is happening, you know, we're exposed to it, but not with the narrative of what the media does. Um, we see it through the eyes of humanity, meaning the person that is recording what they're experiencing. And then we can sympathize and we can connect through compassion. And it makes us more powerful, right? If society, humans can sympathize with other humans, then there's really no distinction. Um, and we just create a stronger bond. And obviously, this is challenging for a government, because, you know, through differences is that we create wars through differences is that we create the, you know, uh, mentality that we are all separate from each other when we're not. Um, so it's not so much about, like I said, with the TikTok thing, it's not so much about it, what they're claiming that it is. It has more to do with the fact that 
if the government doesn't have hold of what we as humans are being exposed to, then it's a challenge, right? Because ultimately we can rise. We are more of us than them. Um, so that's what's happening. And these are all themes that we're going to be experiencing with this transit, um, which is, you know, like I said, what they're trying to either benefit from it or completely demolish it. Now, I will say we're touching a few subjects that may be extremely touching, um, on my channel and YouTube in general <laughs> because of the censorships. But however, I give it to you guys raw and uncut. So don't be surprised. Let's hope that I don't. But if I get shadow banned or whatnot, I'm, I mean, it's been something that's been ongoing. So I don't care. I feel like information, knowledge is power. It always has been, um, which is why we're speaking about this here. But anyways, Another of the energies of Pluto going into Aquarius is obviously the connection and involvement of super intelligence or evolved intelligence, which is something that we have been experiencing and seeing worldwide people recording of UFO sightings more often now, um, et cetera. I definitely see, you know, some type of connection or even contact with other intelligence um, or finding or rediscovering cities and species that we thought were lost at one point. And this is all collectively because of the energy that we're experiencing with Saturn going into Pisces, as well as with this Pluto transit going into Aquarius. So um, you really want to know, if you really want to know what this transit is going to greatly impact your sign, I highly encourage you guys to listen to your rising sign. Of course, you can listen to your sun, moon, um, and rising to get a better idea or picture of what you can expect, what changes you can expect. Um, but highly encourage you guys to listen to your rising. If you don't know your rising, there's tons of um, astrology uh, places that you can go to to get your natal or birth chart. Um, this will help you be able to see what your rising sign is, which is very important. Okay. All right, so let's get into the needy greedy. why you guys are actually here. How is this going to affect your sign? So Aries, sun, moon, and rising. Pluto will be leaving your 10th house. So Pluto has been in your 10th house, um, which is the house of career reputation, where it has been since 2008. That's coming to its finish. Now you have your experience, right? The experience is uh, Pluto going into your 11th house, being activated. Uh, positive house, it's about your groups, your friendships, and people of your tribe, your chosen friends. This is the house of the movement maker. So you can find yourself being involved in movements. Um 11th house can also bring powerful connections and friendships. It depends what, you know, what you would consider powerful, but it usually draws in connections with very little energy that are powerful in whatever career you're in that can really open doors up for you. And it brings powerful connections that are linked to wealth can also happen in the 11th house, you know, reputation and status can happen in the, in this house placement uh, with Pluto. Pluto is power and willpower. And it, you know, it has its ups and it has its downs um, to Pluto entering your 11th house. Um, as an example, you can unfortunately experience the death of a friend or multiple friends, plural, in the planet of death and transformation, you will have power coming to your identity or the connection to your identity. For those of you guys that have uh, planets mm, on your eighth house in the early degrees, this may also uh, speak about receiving some type of inheritance or some kind of windfall of money. But like I said, uh, Pluto is a planet of transformation and it does represent death. Pluto here in your 11th house may speak about, like I said, the loss or um, 
a, a friend, someone you know, someone that you're, you know, have a strong bond with uh, in your friendship circle. Um, we may experience deaths around this time. Keep in mind, it is a transit of 20 years. So, um, and for others of you, when we speak about um, Pluto bringing in uh, connections, right? Uh, friendships that are of power. This is for those of you guys that uh, whatever career field you're in, whatever it is that you do, right? Uh, you could be a painter, you could be an artist, you can be um, an actor, whatever it is that you do. In this transit, um, I experience a lot of clients like going through this. The best way of describing it is like when you go to social outings and it almost feels like, a miracle or an accident or how you meet specific people that come into your life that may become friends with you. Um, but that friendship brings power. So it could be, like I said, the example, you're an actor, you're a painter, whatever, and you meet someone that has your same interest, but it so happens that that's the CEO of a company that you've been trying to sell your paintings to. Uh, for others, you know, an example, you're an actor and you just haven't had a big break. Uh, a friend of you can invite you to a gathering, an outing or something like that. And they introduce you to a very famous, powerful director, right? <laughs> that is currently looking for actors. So it happens that way. So like I said, for a lot of you guys, this can really, because keep in mind, 11th house is right close to the 10th house, which is fame, reputation, stuff like that. And it, as the tarot, so is astrology. Everything is connected. So we look at the house prior and the house after um, to know the influences that it's going to have or how it's going to, how it may impact you. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, for some of you guys um, in the early degrees, um, may also receive some inheritance or some kind of windfall of money. Um, Pluto tends to do that. It tends to bring in money. Um, but oftentimes, I don't want to be a negative Nancy, but oftentimes it does come uh, kind of through a difficult situation, like the loss of a family, family member, and that's why you get um, the inheritance or whatnot. Doesn't always have to be like that, just depending on the, you know, uh, the houses that are influencing in your chart, but you can definitely expect something of those themes for the next coming 20 years. Now, keep in mind, 20 years is a very long time. Those of you guys that are just beginning your career, or for some of you, you may actually be uh, getting ready to retire. With this transit, what can happen is that uh, your focus, um, social connections can lead you, like I said, to powerful um friends or a group of friends that may actually influence you into getting into another field or tapping into some type of investments that may bring to you a lot of money. So that's what you guys can expect for the next coming 20 years. This is a video that you can come back to for the next coming years um, that will make more sense or that in that moment in time, let's say you come back a year later you start to see and acknowledge the themes that are coming up in your life or that you've been experiencing because of this transit. So, all right, now let's go to Taurus. Taurus, Pluto will be squaring your identity from the 10th house of career and reputation. Um, Taurus, your, rep your reputation may power up uh, substantially. Uh, for others, it may power down your career path, could dramatically change, non-traumatic like and shocking like Uranus, um, would be more so like a take a step, um, take a step up or a step down to gather the energy so that you can come out of your cocoon, a complete transformed butterfly. Pluto was in Capricorn, uh, so it was in your ninth house, higher education, travel, foreign lands, legal affairs, um, moving through your 10th house, it's going to make sure that you're no longer doing 
uh, the same job uh, that you were, that you're not in perfect alignment. Um, so what does this mean? This means when I say a power up or a power down, if you are in the right path, meaning if you are doing the career that you always dreamt of, there's a major upswing, meaning that you're going to substantially grow in that area. If you're not, let's say you are doing something that you literally have to drag your feet into when you're going to work um, and you're not excited about it and it's not feeding your soul purpose, then there is a power down, but it is only to recharge, only to refocus, only to go within and internalize. It's time for a change because Pluto's definitely going to bring that transformation. So not to panic, like I said, this is a theme that you're going to be experiencing for the next coming 20 years. So you may start to feel uh, like you're not fulfilled, right? But it's scary making changes because changes is something that the human is not used to. We are creatures of habit, so we don't like change. So you're like, I could deal with this for the next coming two years, whatnot, even though every year it almost feels like it's kind of deflating your soul, um, you will be pushed, you know, by the end of the 20 year transit, you have already transformed. You are either in a different field and you are booming or you're in the same field that you are now, but with higher status and reputation. I hope that makes sense. Um, so like I said, you're going to power up to new levels, new heights that you've never experienced and wealth as well. Um, however, if you are a Taurus son, um, as in masculine, this can represent your father figure. If you are a Taurus moon, moon mother uh, figure here, um, which means that there is a square for some. Um, <clears throat> we don't like to really talk about like heavy negative energy, but it is something that you want to be prepared for. Like I said, do not freak out. It's in the, the transit is 20 years, you guys. So it's not going to be overnight. Of course, uh, the smallest degrees, meaning the <clears throat> beginning degrees of Aquarius, an example, you're an Aquarius, um, one degree, you're definitely going to experience this. Um, you are, you know, your Aquarius, um, let's just say is, 14, 16, 20 degrees, you're not going to experience this until like almost the very end of the tw 20 year transformation or transit, I should say. Um, so like I said, just depending on what your degrees is, but, uh, you know, like I said, if you're a Taurus son, there may be a theme here, a father figure, a transition that happens. So what do we mean by this? Uh, like I said, if you're a moon, um, it would represent your mother figure with the square. It can mean death to those people. Uh, this one represents, you know, uh, everyone, but some of you may experience uh, that, especially in the early degrees, like I said, for some of you guys also. <clears throat> so the early degrees that you are, you're going to be hit with this uh, sooner than the ones that are, later in the degrees of Aquarius. I hope that makes sense to you guys. But um, yeah, so through this transit, unfortunately, sometimes we may experience the loss of a loved one. Um, for some of you guys, also marital status may change. Uh, your descendant will be in the first five degrees can also mean some serious changes or transformation in your significant relationships, particularly to do with partnerships in business or marriage like partners. Um, so in this transit, you may experience some type of separation or some type of breakup or divorce um, through this transit. So just be, like I said, it's not always rosy. It is positive in the aspect that it brings power to you. It brings status to you. Um, but when we're talking about partnerships and relationships, not just relationships, you can let's say you have a business, you run a business and you deal with partners, right? You have partners in your business. 
this may be a transit where in the next coming 20 years that falls apart, meaning that you guys decide to go your own separate ways um, because there's a disconnect that happens here. So just keep that in mind. All right. So we're moving on now to Gemini. Uh, Gemini, uh, it's moving and it's trying to your identity. You're getting a lot of love from Pluto. Uh, this is you getting power and command. Pluto moves through your ninth house. <clears throat> so Pluto is going to be moving into your ninth house. This is all to do with legal affairs, uh, house for foreign travel, study, academia, uh, religion, spiritual beliefs, faith in God, and temples for some house of the third marriage. So what do I mean by that? If you've been married twice, um, this transit can potentially bring to you a third marriage. <laughs> um, so what does that mean? That means that through this, um, for some of you guys, like I said, it could represent third marriage. Uh, you could have the death of a religious belief, a falling away from a father figure for some of you. Um, but more than more, I should say, this is a very good transit for you, Gemini's, because you're really powering up. Like I said, um, if you, let's say you are not in perfect terms with the father figure, this transit may break completely, like create that break, that push, that, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back type of thing. Um, but other than that, it's good flow from, you know, po it's more positive than negative for you guys in this transit. Some of you guys may power up um, on your body. Remember, ninth house is the representation of the house of God. So for some of you guys connecting to your tribe or religious or spiritual connections, masters, uh, teacher showing up into your life. So this is the ninth house is always very spiritual house. It is a house where uh, because Pluto is transformation, it, it brings death to that theme or that experience um, only to give, you know, a rebirth of a different view or a different idea. When Pluto goes into your ninth house, you know, for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are not very religious, let's just say this transit, the next coming 20 years is going to bring you closer to God. Um, so God would be whatever you consider God to be. So for some of you guys, it is connecting with people that are like-minded. Um, it is having a tribe, having friends, having connections with those that have your same mentality or the same views. Um, and obviously love and love creates, you know, the most powerful energy, which is love and all God consciousness. So uh, for others of you, it could be that you are through finding your tribe, you connect and you're exposed to a different way of viewing spirituality, or perhaps for some of you guys, changing your religion, changing what you've grown to basically con what you were conditioned to believe to freeing yourself because Sagittarius is a sign of freedom, releasing yourself and freeing yourself. And in that process of freeing yourself, connecting to your God, connecting to higher consciousness. So sometimes that may lead us to different paths. It may lead us to different religions, different practices, um, but all in all, like I said, it is a very beneficial transit for you, Gemini's um, beautiful energy here. So let's move on now to Cancer. Cancer, you are coming from underneath the energy of Pluto squaring your ascendant soon, uh, sun or moon. You guys have been going through a gauntlet of challenges, honestly, since 2008. Pluto has uh, transited your seventh house of significant, you know, significant partnerships, marriages, business partners, clients, audience, marketplace, you know, for from your 10th house of career, uh, possibly this has transformed 
work in the world um, for you guys, you know, for you people to reach out, um, to expand. If you've been under any marital stress or distress, I should say, um, this is a thing of, uh, this is a theme of separation of divorces. Um, maybe even the death of a spouse that perhaps for some of you guys, like I said, this transit has been happening, um, or you were going through the transit of it being in your seventh house. Um, so for some of you guys, since 2008 to now, you could have potentially, uh, experienced some type of separation or some type of divorce, um, in that transit. So now we're moving into the eighth house here. Um, so that's finally coming to an end. Um, Pluto moves into a wealth house. As you guys know, um, eighth house is a very powerful house. It is a house of, you know, wealth. It is a house of even, you know, the assets or money of, <clears throat> of other people or of your ex-partner or your ex-husband or ex-wife. You're coming to the closing of that. So like I said, it Pluto was in your seventh house, um, which could have potentially, for those of you guys that were married, could have potentially spoke about a break or a separation or a divorce, the legal aspect of that. Um, now with it being in Scorpio, being in the eighth house, this is bringing, like I said, wealth because it's a wealth house and it is a house of partners. So if there was a separation, divorce, this is basically, you know, coming to terms with uh as an example, you were going through a very nasty divorce. With this transit, everything gets squared away and you come up or you get more money than what you expected, like because of that marriage or because of that separation, I should say. So it's going to be different for everyone. Um, for some of you guys, it could be that in since 2008 to now, you experienced the death, the loss of a partner. Um, so you're coming at the end of that. <clears throat> and it was definitely a theme of separations, um, maybe even a death of a spouse, like I said, since 2008 to now, that's finally coming to an end. Pluto moves into the wealth house and also uh, the house of death, the eighth house, Pluto is the king of the eighth house, a <laughs> lord that rules over this house. With Aquarius energy, it's societal, uh, humanitarian, right? Uh, should you become wealthy? Um, because if you become wealthy, you will become humanitarian um, with your abundance. Pluto brings inheritance. Um, secrets are the eighth house. Family secrets in particular, you guys. So for some of you, um, you may be experiencing in this transit that there have been some lies or some illusions in the family dynamic. Um, it is about those really dirty, nasty secrets that we don't talk about, right? Um, with this transit, there is a theme of secrets coming up to the open and having to deal with that. So, like I said, not in a good way because Scorpio, you know, <laughs> the energy of Scorpio, Pluto being, you know, the Lord in its house, um, it's going to be abrupt. So for some of you guys, it could even be the shock of a lifetime. Uh, finding out that for some, um, you were deceived or, you know, family, your mom, your dad, they weren't completely honest about something, about your background, about uh, the family, about your brothers, your sisters type of thing. Um, so you may start to experience this in this transit for some of you. And like I said, it has a lot to do with family secrets in particular. Um, marital secrets as well. Ancestral secrets. Uh, Pluto likes to expose things that are hidden. So keep a watchful eye for this, you guys. In this transit, there is a lot of awareness that happens because you're it almost feels like your eyes will be completely like completely open you know like I said when we talk about ancestral uh we're talking about lineage right so there may be secrets that were kept in the hidden and then all of a sudden someone makes a dig at that subject or that thing about the family and then boom it comes with all these revelations or people speaking about 
you know, what was meant to be hushed. So be aware of that. And like I said, keep a watchful eye for that. Uh, for those of you guys that are married in this transit, you may experience, you know, <clears throat> endings of relationships or partnerships because there are secrets being revealed. So try the best you can to be honest and straightforward. Try the best you can to not so much be honest to your partner, but be honest to yourself. If you're not happy, speak up on that. Um, you know, to me on a personal level. Anyways, there's no need to lie or deceive. If it's not working out, it's not working out. Cut your losses. Of course, that's easier said than done. I completely understand. Um, that's just the Saturn in me. <laughs> just, you know, be honest is what I'm saying because it will come back and bite you in the ass. Um, so moving along, Leo. Leo, this is a movement of Pluto in Aquarius in your marriage house. So we are going into your seventh house. And before that, Pluto was going through your health, karmic debt, your sixth house, basically, of work and work routine. And that also is the house of pets. Um, from 2008 to 2023, you may have had the most, um, this is odd, I know, but for some of you, you could have experienced that you had the most powerful pet of your life. You may have experienced the loss of a pet as well, or just challenges, uh, for some of you in your work life, dealing with people of power that are narcissistic, selfish, or egotistical. Um, going back to, and I just want to touch very briefly on this because I have a Leo in my life and the pets, right? So when I say powerful pets, it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh my God, you're going to get a lion. Like, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, uh, pets that are very transformative and that are very healing to us those would be familiars um to the normal person it would mean a pet that comes into your life at a very challenging time in your life that brings without your awareness of it that brings some type of healing uh they become very prominent in your life and <clears throat> the reason i said you may find this odd is because through this transit, right, of Pluto, when it was previously in your sixth house, it's been there since 2008. And in this transit, um, funny thing, in, <clears throat> in this transit, um, I seen that Leo experienced major transformations in their life, like becoming a mother uh, for the very first time as well as having a very uh, very powerful pet, a pet that brought a lot of healing. Um, but also the pet was almost like a, a very strong, powerful support system for her child. So, you know, ba basically the baby grew up with that pet. And within this transit, uh, as he got older, you know, the pet obviously got older and finally passing away. And that was very like transformative in her life, as well as in her child's life, which by the way, is my nephew in his life. Um, but also with this transit, he just, I want to say about a year, year and a half, just got another pet. So that's the theme. You get what I'm saying? And in, in this is, like I said, it will apply to you. Um, you may not see it happen now in the early degrees of Aquarius. If you have Aquarius in further degrees, then you will experience this sometime through the 20 year transit. But if you're, like I said, if you're, you know, uh, degrees are very like the very beginning of Aquarius, then you're definitely going to see this theme. So though it may not make sense now for you, like I said, this is a, a, a video that you can come back to that will make sense. I hope that I hope I'm making it as clear as possible for you guys to understand. But anyways, I just wanted to give you guys that, you know, 
what I experienced as an outsider seeing a Leo go through this transition. So yeah, very interesting. I found that extremely interesting. And I was like, that's crazy, but moving along. Um, so yeah, a lot of you guys will be experiencing this. Um, perhaps some of you guys will also be experiencing the loss of a pet. Um, for others of you, challenges in your work life, dealing with people of power, like I said, people that are just narcissistic, nasty people, um, people that have this tendency of, you know, really abusing their power or abusing their authority. Um, and that's leaving now and going into your seventh house in this regard, uh, Pluto is transforming and changing, basically revolutionizing your marriage house, you guys. Um, so if you're a Leo and have a marriage partner, um, this is big, you know, uh, major transformation. I don't want to worry you guys because this can predict a separation or a divorce or even the death of a spouse uh, or the death of not a spouse, sorry, the death of the father's spouse, um, it can open up a profound new relationship for some as well. So it's almost like, you know, everything that has to do with astrology, though it is some planets extremely difficult to deal with, it doesn't mean that you're not able to, your soul's purpose is definitely to overcome. So you are wired to do so. Um, and just like, you know, uh, Pluto going into the seventh house, if you've been in a marriage of over 30 years, for example, um, this transit may be challenging because it may really push you guys to the edge where there is like the revelation of this is not working out or it cannot continue like this anymore. And then boom, the divorce happens. But like everything in life, if you've been married with the person for 30 years and you're able to overcome this challenge, it will only make that connection much more deeper and stronger. Um, so there is a rebirth of this connection. Do you see what I'm saying? So not necessarily to panic, but if you are seeing a theme where the relationship is being challenged or you guys seem not to be getting it on the same page, then that's a different story. And again, it could be very predictive of a divorce or separation. Okay. Now, like I said, uh, for some of you guys, it can also, you know, be this transit may affect uh, the spouse's father as there may be a death in this transit as well. Um, it can open up for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are single or have been single for a while. And I know a few, uh, a few Leo clients, <laughs> that have been uh, single for a while because they just don't find that connection, right? Well, here's the thing. With this transit, you guys, it can open a profound new relationship that is deeply intimate and life-changing. Or a new partnership comes in with somebody who is extremely powerful, wealthy or successful in whatever it is that they do. Um, now for some, obviously astrology has everything to do with your rising, your sun, your moon, right? Your Venus, your Jupiter, <coughs> excuse me, et cetera. But usually in this transit, you Leos out there that are single are definitely going to find a connection that is very deep, very powerful. Now, the person that you meet, um, like I said, could be life-changing. This can happen of two ways. For some of you, this can predict a partner or relationship or connection that becomes extremely life-changing in your life. Um, and it just so happens that it brings to you a very powerful and wealthy, successful person. For others of you, it may not bring necessarily a wealthy person, <clears throat> although the chances are very high, you guys, um, be honest. Um, but it will definitely bring a very powerful character, 
by the time this transit is done, which is by the end of 2044. Leos would have gone through the energy of transformation through the other uh, through the other partner. Uh, the other Pluto person, sorry, uh, that you get involved with. So because this can also indicate partnerships in business, partnerships with powerful clients, you guys, it's going to help you transform to the needy greedy. It's going to help you transform your wealth. So wealth can come through other people. What does this mean for you Leos that are just starting your business? Or maybe you've been, you know, you started your business five years ago, hasn't really gone the way you expected. Well, this transit, you guys, by the end of 2044, you will be set. All right. Pluto is a scary planet in the aspect of the death and the transformation that happens. But it is power that comes into you. It is power and wealth. Money is what it's bringing. Here in your seventh house, it is wealth that comes to you through other people. So you're a business. You have clients. It is wealth that comes in through your clients because they're coming to get your service. It just means that you're going to boom and you're going to get really busy. For others of you, it could represent that you know, other people around you are helping and pushing you um, like they've never pushed you before to continue going up the ladder. It may be a C uh, CEO of the company that accidentally, you know, bumped shoulders with you and didn't even know that you existed. And that connection happens and they just feel very in tune or very connected to you. And they're like, you know what, I'm going to help Leo. I'm going to open the, the doors up because I see something in them. It's about powerful connections that will primarily affect your finances in a very positive way. Now, for those of you, like I said, that are single, or maybe those of you guys that are coming out of some type of divorce, some type of separation, it is predictive that you can expect having in this transit or by the end of this transit, having met a very powerful uh, partner that is going to be very life-changing or life-altering. Um, and yes, for some of you guys, this can indicate a partner that is well-established, a partner that is uh, very known in their industry or that has power or wealth. So exciting. All right, moving along now to Virgo. We, <clears throat> we, <laughs> We Virgos have, and I just say we as a collective, <laughs> I'm not a Virgo, just saying. Um, Virgos, Pluto in your sky. Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008, which was your fifth house. Relationships with children, pregnancy, conception, childbirth. Um, relationships that have dealt with complete narcissistic, abusive people, getting involved with profoundly broken people. Narcissistic is a theme here. Controlling as well. Pluto going through your fifth house could have transformed your relationship to having the need to seek play, fun, pleasure, and joy. But it could also have been very restrictive. And what I mean by this is kind of the acknowledgement of knowing that you want to have fun, you want to travel, you want to go out and just let loose. But somehow it feels like you're tied down to responsibility. So it's like the seeking or the wanting to seek for fun, though being very rest restrictive. And it's, you know, the how little can what am I trying to say <clears throat> it basically intensifies your desire for joy and pleasure um but also maybe uh make you find more transformative means for those things to occur it's like I said the desire of wanting to let loose and have fun but also being or feeling like you're being restrictive, uh, 
if you have children like wanting to go out but not being able to find a babysitter, that type of scenario could have been something that it was a theme that you were experiencing when Pluto was in your fifth house. For others of you, like I said, uh, could have been pregnancy, could have been um, childbirth, stuff like that, uh, that you experienced through this transit <clears throat> when it was in your fifth house. Um, so romances that happened during this transit uh, could have transformed you in some way. Like I mentioned earlier, for some of you guys, this transit could also have meant um, the loss of a child or a miscarriage, um, or perhaps experience ha some type of power struggles with one of your children. Um, when they become rebellious, stuff like that, uh, could have been a theme that you were experiencing while Pluto was in your fifth house. Um, now Pluto is done with that, uh, with that story, with those themes, and we're moving on, moving into your sixth house of health. Uh, Pluto here will transform how you take care of your health and how you do the work you're here to do in the world, basically. Pluto here can make you very, very powerful, you guys, especially in the work situation. Within a field or endeavor or with people in power. So Pluto here in your sixth house will also trine your 10th house, the house of career, reputation, fame, and so on. Pluto here, of course, is really going to power you up so that by 2044, when this transit ends, you have achieved new heights and career and reputation, especially if you have your midheaven in the 10th house. A lot of power here. Some of you guys will be getting, you know, very powerful pets. Uh, like the explanation that I did with the Leo. Um, very, you know, pets that come into our lives that completely transform our life in a very positive way. Um, or have, you know, you're going to have powerful outcomes here with Pluto in your sixth house. When it comes to debt, it is relief karmic, especially those of you guys that are trying to get rid of like, you know, bills, debts that you have or that you've had or that you've acquired for a very long time. Um, Pluto in the sixth house can really, like I said, by 2044, completely kill all debts. Um, but it is things that you will need to address through this transit. This is a big boss energy, you guys, not going to lie for Pluto's, um, kudos to you. <laughs> it's not, uh, you know, sweet and breezy all the time. Um, there are challenges, uh, that we have to go through in order to be able to really see the major impact that this transit's going to have in your sixth house, um, but like I said, ultimately, really, you're powering up in this house. You are, um, this is a big boss energy. Like I said, with Pluto in your sixth house, Pluto and your sixth house is going to be doing a trine to your second house of earnings. So career and money really leveling up for you over the years ahead, especially since Saturn, the Lord of <clears throat> where your Pluto is going um exalts your earnings right it exalts your 10th house so it's your earnings um there's also a sense of for some of retiring or stepping away from the line of work and increased revenue and ways of earning money or make money to or, or what's the word um make money to make more money for you uh, as Pluto sextiles the house of stocks, investments, legacy, wealth, royalty, um, income. This is a great time for all Virgos, sun, moon, or rising financially. Virgo, <clears throat> this transit is really, really powering you up. Um, you have, you know, sextiles, you have trines that are happening in 
houses that are very much connected to, like I said, reputation, your career, fame, notoriety, um, self-worth in the, in the second house, which is uh, money, you know? So this transit is going to be majorly, um, transformative for the next coming 20 years for you. Um, where you really become your own, where you really become uh, stable or financially secure. Um, it really has no limit to the potential that you're able to do. But again, keeping in mind, sixth house is a busy house. So it's keeping up with that. All righty, my lovelies. Now let's go to Libra. All right, Libra, Pluto transit in Aquarius is positive in some ways because it trines your ascendant. However, this can also bring transformation to your romantic life, uh, to your life with your children. If you have uh, anything to the concept of what brings you joy, uh, this transit happening in your fifth house energy for you, uh, before this happened, Pluto was in your fourth house. You may have gotten uh, wealthy on land, on legacy, some inheritance for some of you. Um, Capricor uh, Capricorn transit is ending now and you're moving into the fifth house where creative, uh, very creative energy here. Of course, Pluto can also activate some powerful deep romance, but this can also be in creative pursuits. Uh, that transform you or how you view life in general when <clears throat> you really tap into your natural gifts and talents. So Pluto tr uh, trining your ninth house, you may want to pursue higher education for some of you guys. There may be a desire to want to travel to foreign lands. Uh, for others of you uh, that are trying to have children or to conceive if you are on the first or beginning first degrees of Aquarius, I would hold off until the later degrees because you are prone, unfortunately, in this placement um, for miscarriages or the loss of a child. Uh, for those of you guys that are seeking romance, if you are in the beginning degrees as well, if you're not looking for something deep, I would hold off uh, to later degrees. Why? Because this transit is immensely emotionally uh, charging. And as an example, if you are not looking for anything serious, but then you connect with someone, um, the energy, the connection is so powerful that you can resist it. You can resist this connection. Um but then later on, you kind of feel like it's getting very intense. So you kind of need to speak up and say, hey, you know, I wasn't really looking for anything serious. This could be obsessive energy. Pluto could be dark. <laughs> so if you're not looking for something, uh, be honest, because with this transit, like I said, you are prone for obsessive energy, basically the nicest way of putting it, to be completely honest with you. Um, unless you're really wanting that intensity, you know, almost obsessive energy, because Pluto can definitely bring that in, especially in your fifth house of romance. For those of you guys that are married, you may want to be careful in this transit because you may be tempted to step out of the relationship or commitment and it becomes heavily obsessive. So again, uh, Pluto has heavy, dark energy um, and could be extremely obsessive. When we talk about uh, obsessive in a negative aspect, um, it's kind of like what started off as, you know, a connection of like, let's say you're married, you're tempted, the temptress takes over you. Um, so you give in but thinking that you're able to cut it off or to cut them loose, like it doesn't happen that way. With this transit, 
they will stalk you. They will find out, even if you're the most discreet and private person, they will find out like your address, where you live, who you're married to, and they will go out of their way to put you basically on display, on blast for everything to crumble around you. So maybe I'm, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm exaggerating because that's exactly what happens. <laughs> but what comes to mind is that movie of Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Um, I believe it's Angela Bassett, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, she's like, I don't care. But then she goes psycho type of shit. Yeah, that's the type of energy you're looking. So walk a straight line. Um, <clears throat> I'm saying if you don't want to like, you know, um, jeopardize what you have built through this process through this transit so all right um like i said uh yeah so like i said if you're married you may want to be careful because around this transit you may be tempted to step out of the relationship or commitment and it becomes heavily obsessive you don't want to uh get things pretty much blown up in your face uh, keeping in mind, Pluto is the planet that likes to, you know, bring out secrets that likes to, and not in a nice way, you know, not in a nice way. Um, it could get messy. So just be wary of that. All right, moving along. Now we have here Scorpio. Scorpio, Pluto is moving into the sky through your fourth house. After it's spent quite a while in your third house of trips, travel, siblings, neighborhood, nieces, cousins, and nephews, and skill-based learning, as Pluto gets ready to leave your third house, which also rules elementary and high school, uh, the fourth house is the house of your home. It's where you live, your ancestral line. It's the house of the mother having to do with your ancestry, legacy, and wealth. So for some of you, uh, this can transform your relationship with your mother. Uh, for others of you, you may be tapping into ancestral work, uh, maybe something that you're tapping into or that perhaps for some of you will be picking up through this transition. Family secrets. And we're not talking about you know the positive ones and what great... Uh, they did for humanity. We're talking about secrets that are extremely toxic or toxic experiences um, that will be coming to the forefront. This is secrets that will be coming to light. Those hidden family issues that no one likes to talk about. Um, wealth can be approved here. So for some of you, this is a wealth transit uh, for you guys. A lot of you can begin to build your wealth through home, land, property, and real estate. So in this transit, for some of you guys, you're acquiring your first house. For others of you, you are investing in land or property um, that within the transit of the 20 years will definitely be increasing your wealth um, and, and legacy. Uh, this is true, especially for Scorpio Risings. Uh, Pluto is in a waiting square to your son, uh, your purpose, also father figure. So for some of you guys, um, you may be experiencing or dealing with issues arising or regarding a father figure. Uh, for those of you with Scorpio and your ascendant, this is having to do with your identity. So you may change uh, who you think you are. Um, for some, there could be a profound change in your marital status uh, some of you guys could and will be going through some type of separation or divorce. Um, it may happen around this time frame uh, that the, the transit is happening. So um, true for those with later degrees, meaning that if you are in the early degrees of Scorpio, <clears throat> um, you may be experiencing uh, these implications or changes or themes that are going to be coming up in your life at the later, uh, you know, later time frame of the next coming years uh, versus those of you guys that have earlier degrees, um, you will be definitely seeing these themes come up uh, and having to deal with them. This is for 
uh, mostly the early degrees of Scorpio rising, you will definitely start to see these themes come up, these issues, like I said, something having to do with, um, you know, father figure issues. Uh, this could be dealing with, uh, like I said, when you talk about toxicity and toxic behaviors or secrets that are going to be coming up um, that may be having to do with that. Um, not necessarily for some of you guys, it could be dealing with, you know, the health of a father figure. Um, but overall, it is definitely connected to um, toxic behavior within the family dynamics. So um, as an example, it could be a situation where you're dealing with uh, health issues of a father figure. And through that process, you find out that a lot of the family members are extremely toxic that are you know, judgy, but don't want to step in, don't want to help type of thing. Um, whereas on the most, um, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Worst case scenario could be that there is a secret bombshell that comes up uh, or pretty much blows up um, and you have to deal with that. And we're talking about family and the family dynamic and the ancestral or bloodline. So um, those are themes that you may be experiencing for the next coming 20 years. Like I said, you guys, a lot of it, a lot of it is whether we go through good or bad, it is always to the higher benefit of our soul, um, evolution and evolving. Um, some situations or, you know, experiences are much more difficult than others. Um, but regardless, it is something that we're capable of overcoming, and though sometimes it may be a scary thought or a scary an example, uh, uh, dealing with, uh, you know, Pluto bringing deaths, uh, sometimes it's extremely, you know, scary uh, when we're talking about like relatives or father figures, mother figures type of scenario. Um, like I said, it it is something that it could be very predictive because unfortunately it does bring that Um as it is the planet of death. Um, but it is the cycles of life. And all right, moving along. Now we're going to Sagittarius here. And Sagittarius Pluto has been uh, in Capricorn, your house of wealth and earnings, how you make money, uh, your hustle, resources, possessions. I know this has been extremely difficult for you guys, some highs and some lows um, influence, uh, influencing for some of your, for you guys in your career since 2008. Now Pluto is getting ready to get out of Capricorn. Major changes here for some of you, um, house, for some of you guys, you could have gone through a transition of, you know, uh, lost the loss of something could have been the loss of a house, um, keep in mind, not now, but since 2008, this is a theme that you could have been experiencing. Um, like I said, the loss of a house for others, your car got taken away or you lost your car um, or got it repossessed. There was constant instability is the energy here that you've been experiencing since 2008. Sometimes having to deal with spousal finances as we're getting ready to go into your third house of siblings, especially Sagittarius rising, especially if you have them in your uh, first degrees. This cannot uh, predict the death of a sibling. Um, I don't want to say it cannot, sorry. I meant this can predict the death of a sibling doesn't always happen that way, um, but where there is a challenge in the life of a sibling, an uncle, a cousin, a niece, or a nephew, or extended family, um, or childhood friends. So close to home. Sorry about that, you guys. I had to mute really quick because people were getting extremely loud in the house. So like I was saying, um, challenge in the life of a sibling. 
Um, so this is a theme that you will be experiencing or going through. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, uh, you could be an uncle or a cousin or a niece to someone. And you may be experiencing these changes as well. So basically, it's issues surrounding close to home or what you would consider ho close to home, uh, family, friends, relatives. Um, but there is power in the neighborhood for some of you. So it's trans a transformative move here. Um, like I said, there was a theme of constant instability, whereas Pluto uh, going into your third house now, uh, it's bringing major transformation to what you have been incurring the past, you know, the past 20 years. Uh, but now being in your third house, the positive in this is that uh, this is a transformative move and it could represent moving into uh, a better place to live, a better surrounding, a better neighborhood. Uh, you may travel and have powerful journeys where it's very transformative. Uh, the transform that transforms your life. Um, but you can also learn things or pick up on skills um, because third house, you know, uh, is very prone for picking up on new skills that could potentially help you down the line to create more possibility, more opportunity or more money. Um, so again, but you can also learn, <laughs> excuse me, um, this is, like I said, this is the house of siblings. So some of you guys may struggle with having to do or deal with people in the family dynamic or your brother, your sisters of power struggle uh, with siblings or a sibling that is trying to overpower you. Um, it's the house of writing as well. So if you've been wanting to write uh, something that Pluto definitely amplifies and it being in the house of communication, your third house can bring wealth through writing, uh, the online world, if you want to study or teach very powerful, um, very powerful in this placement. So uh, again, anything that has to do with teaching, anything that has to do with writing, obviously this, this is the themes of the third house with Pluto being there though, Pluto is power. Like I said, you guys power and money. So, um, the, you can really tap into this. Like I said, if you've been trying to write a book or if you've been trying to start your business online or um, teach something that you've studied for a while, um, this placement can definitely open new opportunities for you. Um, very powerful in this house. Um, if you tap into Pluto's energy, anything to do with conspiracy theories, the esoteric, hidden knowledge, um, sexuality, you may level up in that area, meaning money bank coming in for you guys in this placement. Your seventh house will be trined. Um, so those of you guys that are single and you're looking for a partner, you can certainly find a partner, uh, where you mean in this tier, a uh, very powerful connection or partner, uh, that you meet through this 20 year window. So it may be something that you see come up in the next coming two years or three, like I said, depending on how uh, early degrees you are, um, the earlier you'll be able to experience or see these themes take place. Whereas if it is further, because like I said, keep in mind, uh, Pluto is going to be tiptoeing. Pluto is going into Aquarius and then from June, it's going to move back into Capricorn and then going into 2024. That's when it goes in again and it stations there completely. So the very first few months that we experience this transit, it's only going to be there uh, not for a very long time. Uh, and it's only the very early degrees of Aquarius, like I said. So just keeping that in mind. Okay. All right, now moving on to Capricorn. Capricorn Pluto moving through your second house of earnings is going to power you up. Your money, you can be obsessive about your money, a bit of a power struggle regarding getting what you want, 
but at what cost? If you handle this transit right over the next 20 years, it can bring great wealth, especially if you have your midheaven in the 10th house. Um, with that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, with that, um, with that mid heaven right there, uh, your career and reputation may increase. This is uh, great because you've been dealing with Pluto in the house of um, opposite of your marriage house. Some of you guys could have gone through a divorce or a separation or multiple divorces, multiple separations. <laughs> I laugh because I know a few of them. <laughs> Anyways, and I'm not laughing at you guys. It's just that, you know, pimping and easy. But anyways, moving along. Um, so like I was saying, you could have experienced um, with Pluto in the house that you've been, because it's been opposite of your marriage house, some of you guys could have gone through multiple divorces, multiple separations. For others of you, you could have experienced the death of a relationship or the death of a spouse on a more deeper level. Um, so you guys have, you know, really gone through it um, with Pluto being obviously in your sign. Um, but now it's done and you've gotten rid of what is not good for you. For some, uh, there's still a possibility of either going through it, you're still going through it or trying to figure it out. Uh, but you will be going through it before Pluto goes into Aquarius meaning that the end or conclusion of that um, Aquarius fully in 2024, Pluto moving into your second house is definitely going to make your resources grow. And this is the thing, you guys, <clears throat> like I said, Pluto definitely brings power and money in your second house. Second house is a very powerful house because this is um, the house of money, the house of your power and how it's easier with your natural God-given talents, how you are able to make money in a very effortless way. So with Pluto going into your second house, there is massive opportunity for wealth here, massive opportunity for taking it to the next level, massive opportunity here for making money through different sources, different you know, and because you have all of these opportunities and because it brings a lot of power, this is why it's important to <clears throat> deal with this transit in the next 20 years the best possible way. Why do we say that? Well, Capricorn is a sign of ambition. And with Pluto's energy, you know, we were talking about uh, obsessive energy. You could become very obsessive about money or the power that money and wealth brings. <clears throat> this is where, you know, uh, the good hearted person um, get, gets a taste of power, gets a taste of money, and they become corrupt or they can possibly become corrupt. Uh, not saying that all of you guys are going to go through that uh, has, like I said, everything to do with your birth chart. Obviously, if you have um, other planets in other houses that uh, definitely amplify that obsession, that power hungry type of thing, um, it could potentially bring you massive money and massive power, but at what means, like we said in the very beginning. So it is maintaining that balance. Um, like I said, it's not to predict that all of you Capricorns are going to just become hungry, uh, power hungry people. Um of course not, because you also have the, uh, you know, very um, Capricorn is a sign that is uh, very disciplined. And because of life and because life is never easy for Capricorns, you can definitely sympathize through, to other through other people, their experiences, um, because you're a wise sign. So what does this mean? This means that if acquired um, massive power and wealth, um, you can, you know, do more good um, by helping or being an extension of other people and their blessings, if that makes sense. So whenever you feel, uh, and this is just like a, kind of a warning, not necessarily a warning, but just to be mindful of it. 
when you start to experience these themes come up in these 20 and this 20 year transit where you start to catch on or feel <clears throat> like you're chasing more the like the making money not so much because you love or enjoy doing it but because you can and because you have the power to do so that's when we kind of got to step back and check ourselves you know um the way you're receiving excuse me the way you're receiving are you giving um you know because this this life is all about give and take and balance so um now, for those of you guys that have been struggling, those Capricorns that have been going through very difficult, trying times when we talk about finances, this is definitely taking it to the next level. And you're finally either experiencing or will be experiencing major financial stability. So positive in that. Um, it kind of gives me like the, the, what I'm thinking of when I'm explaining this is kind of like the scenario of you know, when you go through difficulties is when we become very spiritual, right? When you have the soul need at a soul level, you have the need to connect with your spirit side. Um, and this is something that I tell my clients often. It's like, it's so easy for us to forget about our spiritual side or uh, compassion, empathy, um, when we're doing amazing, because when we're doing amazing and we're doing great and there's no stress, uh, we become selfish. And it's not to say that selfishness is a bad thing because sometimes it's necessa necessary, um, believe it or not. But don't forget, you know, where you come from or the struggle because that struggle led to wisdom, led to that lesson, to the learning of that lesson. So that when you're able to advance, you're able to much more on a deeper level appreciate. Do you see what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. So anyways, moving along, like I said, um, yeah, so Aquarius fully, uh, stations, um, or Pluto fully, uh, stations in Aquarius 2024, moving into your second house. Like I said, it's definitely going to make your resources grow opportunities for new, re uh, resources by selling possessions. Um, but also maybe investing for some of you Capricorns in the stock, uh, stock market, gold, silver, precious metals, things, uh, things that Pluto rules over. Uh, you're going to be very resourceful and powerful in getting yourself the money you need. Um, sextiling the house of land and resources you might buy and sell land developments, buildings, constructing, um, owning. Pluto can also help you transform uh, your sickness or your sicknesses uh, or transform your work, um, your work better. Um, to a better career path or a change in career path for some of you. Uh, the second house can also be the house of second marriage for some of you. So uh, very exciting news there, right? <laughs> All right, moving along. Um, lastly, but not least, the famous Aquarius, right? Because we're talking about you Aquarius all this time. <laughs> all right, Aquarius, Pluto in your 12th house. Um, or it had been in your 12th house. Psychological, spiritual, massive power here, massive transformation. Um, you have gone through a major transition. Um, whatever wasn't working for you or whatever hasn't been working for you for the past 20 years um, was killed off right? Uh, we had to die off that part of us that kept us stuck or kept us from moving forward to be finally being reborn, uh, clearing the karma. Now, uh, you're having Pluto in your first house. This is the house of your identity, Aquarius, your body, uh, the death and rebirth of who you thought you were, and is no longer connecting or you're not really vibing with the idea of what you thought you were at some point um, to who you are now. And it's because of this major transit that you've experienced. Um, you've had revelations to who you really are, who you want to be. Um, Pluto will be opposing your descendant. So if you are in a long-term marriage or business partnership, 
This is a house of clients, audience, photos. Uh, looking right across from that, also creating a trine in your house of children and romance, strengthening the relationships with your children or a level up in the romance department, especially those of you that haven't really had anything stable in that department. Relationships, uh, this is specifically true for those that start a relationship within this time frame. Why, like I mentioned, um, Pluto, <clears throat> when it transits um, a house and there are powerful trines that are happening, um, we can almost predict that when Pluto brings in relationships, these are massive transformative relationships. This is the type of relationship that will transform you literally for the next 20 years or a connection that begins as something casual that later on becomes obviously 20 year type of relationship or connection. So those of you guys that have been, mm, let's say single for a while, um, you are definitely will be experiencing a very deepening of a connection through this transit. Um, like I said, uh, those of you guys that start a relationship within this time frame from now all the way to June, um, you will not be wasting your time. Basically, if the partner is not willing to go with you to the depths of this relationship to the underworld, right? Which is the representation of Pluto, uh, the deep, you know, um, if they can't go with you, then they're not your person and you will quickly non-hesitantly remove them from your life. Uh, this is going to be a transit that, you know, takes over 20 years. If you're married and that marriage is not working out or you have, uh, the early degrees, you may experience some type of separation or temporary separation or divorce for some, um, you know, a sense of personal transformation. Um, so again, you know, there, there's almost like a, there's almost like a freedom that's happening here, um, for you Aquarians, um, I feel like the last couple of years, you guys have definitely really gone through it, have really experienced in many different aspects for some of you guys relationship wise, for others of you financially. And I feel that with this uh, transit, because this is your first house, this is you. Um, not only is there going to be transformative energy in regards to you, yourself, your physical body, yourself, and what you believe you are, to who you become more aware that you really are. Um, this is major transformative energy and it's very empowering because it's in your first house. So much more confident, much more secure in who you are. Um, and like I said, for a lot of you guys, uh, very powerful connections coming in for you through this transit. So beautiful, beautiful energy here. All right. And I said, finally, but not least, I completely, um, <laughs> excuse me, not that I forgot about you, Pisces, but I wasn't really looking at the notes that far. <laughs> All right. So Pisces, Pluto is in your 12th house, very spiritual transit. Um, I can take you to foreign lands, uh, maybe some career learning or something, uh, that you learned uh, that ends up becoming a career down the line. Um, but mostly this is soul work on steroids. Um, so what do I mean by that? A lot of you guys had been experiencing um, the, the placement of being uh, Pluto being in your first house, which is the self right? The transformation of self. Um, but now in your 12th house, this is the house of spirituality. This is the, this is your house, you know, where uh, you're comfortably in. And with this, you know, Pluto is transformation. Pluto is 
the depths of, you know, 12 house, which is digging, deeping, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, diving deep into your spirituality, the bigger questions in life, <clears throat> the why am I here? The what did I learn from this lesson? The is this my purpose? Am I passionate about this? If you're not, it's going to feel very uncomfortable for you. Why? Because like I said, Pluto going into your 12th house. Um, soul work, you know, like I said, it's soul work on steroids. If you have karmic addictions, habits, uh, toxic patterns of self undoing or self destructive patterns, you're getting rid of it. Why? Because like I said, Pluto is diving deep into whatever house it goes into going into your 12th house your ruling house it is really questioning almost like looking at ourselves in the mirror and seeing the themes of our life play out and us being able to literally finger point this is where I messed up, or this is something that I keep doing. Why do I keep doing that? And then you start to do self-reflection. Um, and a lot of you guys, you know, becoming very, very spiritually self-aware. Um, but with this, obviously Pluto brings transformation. It brings death to something to be able to be reborn. So with this, you know, if, obviously 12 house sometimes having to do with addictions and stuff like that. Um, if you have, you know, certain toxic behaviors, uh, addictions of alcohol, drugs, you know, medication, whatever, self-sabotaging, uh, of undoing or self-destructive, you're getting rid of this. Um, you know, you're getting rid of it because, you're killing or ending that cycle in your life and you're becoming more spiritually aware. And when you become more spiritually aware, you understand um, on a deeper level, like your purpose, why you're here. It's almost like walking with intention, walking with purpose. Like you become much more powerful in this transit, Pisces, um, and more confident in yourself and becoming even aware of the power that you really possess. Whereas in the past, perhaps, um, there is a lot of self-doubting happening. So again, you know, a lot of toxic patterns, anything that has to do with self-destructive or self-sabotaging, that's quickly coming to an end. Um, Watch, watch out for attracting powerful people here who are secretly your enemies. Um, 12 house is, you know, uh, right from, you know, attracting, um, not necessarily attracting, but dealing with people that you feel are in good faith with you, but have, you know, that uh, what's the word I'm looking for, have that underlying tone of envy or jealousy, or they see something in you that they don't have and they secretly hate on you. Um, so, you know, basically with Pluto coming into, you know, Pluto, what does Pluto do? It reveals, right? It brings out secrets, things that are trying to be hidden, like it's going to bring it out and Deal with it now, Pisces, you know? So for some of you, don't be surprised if you experience um, finding out about, you know, secret enemies, people that you thought maybe were close to you, and turns out they weren't that close. Um, but you can also potentially be attracting, like I said, powerful people who are secretly your enemies. Be cautious about serving people that pretend to be on your side. Um this uh, transit can also bring inheritance. Pluto, uh, because Pluto is in a trine to your house of legacy, inherit inheritance, spousal support, 
alimony, uh, money that can come through investments or from money making um, like 401ks, et cetera, um, opens up a gateway to your fourth house as well. So you might find yourself buying and selling real estate property for some of you acquiring for the first time for others of you uh, buying and reselling. Um, you will definitely start to see that your money starts to progress and increase as well as your possessions or the possessions you begin to gain um, through this time frame uh, on a higher, you know, <clears throat> on a higher note. Um, but, you know, 12 houses also secrets and Pluto uh, revealing it is, you know, for some of you experiencing uh, secret love affairs, uh, eighth house secrets um, connected to bed pleasures. So for some of you guys could potentially bring revelations about your partner um, or your prospective partners uh, not necessarily being good and things that they've tried to keep hidden, love affairs, um, anything like that uh, can happen when Pluto goes into the 12th house. So be careful going into temptation for some of you as well as this may be giving uh, into it because this will definitely come out in the open if you do so. Um, but I see the 12th house more like uh, when we're talking about relationships and connections, uh, the secret house. And with Pluto going into it, I do find oftentimes that uh, clients do experience revelations. And these are really life changing, transformative type of revelations, not necessarily a good thing. Um, one scenario I can, you know, kind of bring um would be the fact that, you know, uh, a specific client was dealing through or going through something that uh, kind of like people warning that person um, that their partner could potentially be interested in same sex type of thing. And they didn't believe it. Um, and then, you know, it so happens that uh, revelations and, and not just the finding now, but it was like with pictures and everything. So very like life changing, right? Because it altered, you know, their experience, obviously it came to a divorce and everything. So what I'm saying is that with this transit, you may be tempted to even step out of the relationship or the marriage and stuff like that. So just be careful with that because Pluto will not keep anything hidden. So it will reveal. Um, but for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been married for a while and things have been very rock, like rocky, um, could be predicting, you know, separation or divorce, um, and it's in a scandalous way. Uh, so something to just be aware of. Like I said, it's not something that I would tell you guys to really uh, obsess over um, in the worry energy. Like, don't worry about it. Keep in mind that it is a 20 year transit, you guys. So uh, for those of you guys that are going to be doing very well financially, um, once this transit happens, like don't assume that you're going to become wealthy, boom, the next day. It is a transit of a 20 years, um, but you will definitely start to see those themes start to play out. Of course, the earlier degrees, you will definitely see or experience or get hit sooner than the ones that have later degrees. Well, my lovelies, I hope that I was able to give you guys more insight. I hope that I was able to better prepare you guys and uh, comment, like, and share. Let me know if you guys enjoy these videos. And well, for now, that is it. We will be seeing each other soon. Till then, have a good one, my lovelies, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.